Hello and welcome. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's figure out who the murderer is. Although we won't figure it out today. The murder only just happened at the very, very end of last stream. We, we certainly will not figure out who it is just yet. Although it was probably uh, Grandmaster whatever his name is. The, the leader of all England. Law. Courts. So this happened. Behind that door. In the storeroom. Hurry! Right. Sholmes was, was shot by a mysterious person. Yes, a locked room. <laughs> We're peeking, peeking in the door. She is unconscious with a gun in her hand. With his gun, I think? It looks like it might be his pistol. <clears throat> um, what's his name? I forgot his name. He's dead now. Dead people don't get names. No, what was his name? From that moment... Windebank. From that moment, Windebank's pawnbrokery became a crime scene. Welcome, Garrett. Yes, I'm on it. Rub fingers all over everything. And everyone. Everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the questioning. It was just before dawn, before I was allowed back to my lodgings at 22, 221B. Two, 221B upper. Oh, Iris. A telegram came, but all it said was, wait at home. Oh, yes. We asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simply impossible to come back. When I woke up, I was all alone. Hurley and Ginny were gone. Everyone was gone. What happened, Runo? Poor Iris. She's trembling. She's obviously trying very hard not to let herself get too worried. I'll explain everything that I know. Something awful has happened, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid so. Now is the perfect time to go look around my room. Noted. Ah, the Daruma doll I brought with me from home, still with only one eye colored in. I said I'd color the other eye once I won my first court case here in Britain, but... That's cruel, only letting it have one eye. Yes, but it's because I don't consider myself a good enough lawyer yet, you see. Once I become a fully-fledged lawyer, with lawyer fledges, Miss Susato will color in the other eye for me. Well, in that case, why not color in the other eye now? And then every time you win a new case, give it an extra eye. You can never have too many eyes, you know. Call me crazy, but I'd never considered that. That's weird. I didn't expect these to have dialogue that was specific to... I assume I could have looked around here before when, um... When she wasn't in the room, and Susato was. Oh, well. Let's talk. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but your father is dead. Oh, no, wait. I'm not going to tell her that. But Mr. Windebank is dead. He was shot. We discovered it in the early hours of the morning. Oh, yes, I had a feeling. You did? Well, I saw all those police carriages pulling up outside his shop. Oh, you had a deductive feeling, not like a psychic feeling. Only psychic feelings are, are useful in court. So I knew something must have happened there. When we entered Windebanks in the small hours, the wee hours, we disturbed a gang of two thugs. Is it really a gang if there's only two of them? They ran out into the street, and I chased after them, but they got away. So, it was one of them who shot old Mr. Windebank, I suppose. I don't know, but that's not what the police believe at the moment. <gasps> Why not? They've arrested someone else as their prime suspect, you see. Gina. Jenny? No, Gina. <laughs> but why? Well, 
the thing is... No, Ginny wouldn't do something like that. I know, I know, none of us think she did it. Then why have they arrested her? I'm sorry. There was nothing I could do. I don't understand why they arrested Ginny. It's not fair. What about the two thugs that were on the scene? Why aren't they the prime suspects? After all... They shot Hurley dead, didn't they? No! Uh, I mean, Mr. Sholmes isn't dead, Iris. Arg, this is all so horrible. The thing is, Mr. Windebank was found on the floor in the storeroom where he keeps all the deposited articles, and the storeroom door was locked from the inside. I see. But he wasn't alone in there. Gina was found next to him on the floor as well. Oh no! And according to the detectives who investigated afterwards... Don't tell me. There was no one else in the room? Yes, exactly. How did you know? It's the only explanation. Yes, the only explanation indeed. What do you mean by that, Runo? Well... Ugh. <laughs> what can I say? I'm damned if I agree, damned if I don't. So where's Hurley, then? Is he still investigating the scene? He really ought to have some breakfast. It's not good for him to miss meals. It's also not good for him to be shot in the stomach! I don't want you to worry, Iris, but I have some news about Miss Mr. Sholmes. He was taken to hospital this morning. What? Well, um... When we entered Windebanks, a gun was fired, and he took a bullet. Hurley? Was shot? No. No! It's alright, his life isn't in danger. Really? Are you sure? Isn't it, like, 1905? Where is he? Which hospital? He's at St. Sinners. They're ten tending to him there. St. Sinners. I must see him at once. I'm sorry, Iris, but I haven't exhausted all of your dialogue choices yet, so you may not leave the room. That's not fair. I'm a family member. I should be allowed. No, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see. This is this is how you convince someone that their life is not in danger. <laughs> to operate? Oh, poor Hurley. It was the two thugs who were in Mr. Windebank's shop. They shot Mr. Sholmes when we disturbed them, you see. We're jumping to a lot of conclusions. How do we know that Mr. Sholmes didn't shoot himself, secretly? Hey, Shoob. <coughs> Welcome, Shoob. We're on what I think is the final case. And we had we went through so much before we got to the, the murder at the very end of last stream. It was Mr. Windebanks. Oh, assault on poor green lady? Yes. That finished. <laughs> uh, it, it turned out that um, the domestic dispute in the the window up or in the apartment upstairs, um, that the maid slash wife threw a book and then a knife at at her husband, which hit the window and then fell down out of the window. Uh, the book fell first, and when the green coat lady went to uh, bend down to pick it up, the knife fell into her back and we proved it circumstantially it was pitch black inside the shop at the time my mind went totally blank I'm afraid I, I just froze after them go after that I ran out into the street but well they were long gone I shouldn't have hesitated I'm so sorry uh, that was that was last episode. That, that was four, and, and this is five. Oh, that, that was, yeah, that was the most recent episode. You didn't miss that much. <laughs> For there to be a whole episode in between. Although I could see how you might think that since the, the intro to this case was so, so long... And it was all about, um, like, meeting this pawnbroker guy. 
that was an entire stream was just hanging out in the in the pawn shop. <laughs> I think that's a very good thing. Sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them, you might have been shot as well, Runo. <sighs> On top of everything else, I I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris. Oh, well, yeah, you missed an entire stream, but not, uh... Or wait, did so did you miss all of... All of case four? Or were you there for some of it? Anya. <laughs> Where's Susie, Bruno? She's still at the police station. Oh, why? I expect she's still being questioned. The police said they wouldn't be finished for a while. Why aren't you there, then? Well, I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyway, so they weren't questioning me for long. And Miss Susato stayed behind at the scene to tend to Mr. Sholm, so they didn't get started until later. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so there was a stream of there was a stream of that where um we we got to the bottom of it. <laughs> Besides, one of us had to come back to be with Iris. I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed to me leaving early. You should have let me know, and I would have come to the station. I'm afraid I'll need to go out again now, Iris. There's not much I can do at the moment. I... I don't think she actually got a... Like, they, they weren't like... Well, I suppose the woman who, who got stabbed didn't die. So it wasn't actually a murder case. But yeah, did did she like they kind of they kind of skipped out on on her like being culpable for the fact that she, you know, f nearly fatally injured someone. I su I suppose she was arrested, maybe. But I can at least try to find out how Mr. Sholmes and Gina are getting on. I want to go too. Take me with you, Runo. <gasps> I can't stand just sitting around here waiting. Of course you can't stand if you're sitting. That's what they call a contradiction. I'm not sure how I feel about taking a ten-year-old child to the scene of a murder. Wouldn't be the first time that- Oh, well, it's the first time for him. Phoenix, though? Phoenix took Pearl to every murder. But I don't want to leave her all alone here, either. All right, then, Iris. Perhaps you can help me. Oh, yes, I'd love to. Gina's at the prison. Mr. Sholmes is probably in his hospital bed. Don't forget, we have to visit the crime scene. I need to conduct a thorough investigation. Uh, I can see you're ready for action. I imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Well, prepare to be disappointed. I guess we'll, maybe we will go here first. Oof. They can afford two windows worth of window tax, but they can't fix the cracks in the walls? Priorities are backwards. Hurley. Oh. He's not here. No, that's strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't she? Oh, I know it's probably happened. Hurley was being a big baby, and the bullet wound wasn't that bad after all, so he's been sent home. Not so sure about that. Baby or not, there's no question that it was a fairly serious injury that Mr. Sholmes suffered. Oh. Hello, hello. What have we here? Oh, he's a regular police guy. This ward is off limits. No visiting. So what are you doing in here, eh? Well, I'll have you know we're Hurley's next of kin. Eh? Oh, oh, begging your pardon, then, ma'am. Little lady and a curious Eastern gentleman. The great mystery solvers. The great mystery solver has a mysterious family, eh? That's how you see us, I'm sure. 
Where is he, Constable? Where's Hurley? Well, he's currently in the operating theater, man. Undergoing an, an extensive operation. Extensive? It has been several hours since he went in. Oh dear. Is he going to be alright? Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of irresponsible for us to tell Oh, he's he's definitely not in any any uh, risk of anything serious. <laughs> well, it doesn't appear to be working, you see. The anesthetic that is. Oh, on account of all the cocaine. We're finally confronting him on that. I have heard in a report the gentleman claims he may have had a little too much to drink last night. Coffee, that is. <laughs> anyway, it'll be fair to assume we won't be back here for several hours yet. I see. Thank you, Constable. Perhaps we should leave and come back later. Oh, poor Hurley. Yeah, well, what about this? Nothing? I'm gonna go to the bed, though. This must be Mr. Sholmes' bed. Poor Hurley. I know. It looks as stiff as a board, doesn't it? Oh, I don't think that will bother him. No? I often find him asleep face down on the floor, completely dead to the world. I think I'd call the police if I discovered someone like that. Why is this room such a mess? Also, what's this? Rules? There's a notice board on the wall here. Look, let's see. What does it say? Thought of the day. On seeing any vermin, calmly and, <laughs> calmly and discreetly inform matron. Oh, yes. They have rats and mice in hospitals like this that love to feast on all the medicine. If you don't deal with them, there's nothing left to treat the patients. Rats and mice? Oh, I see. This is a rather old building, I suppose. But the doctors and nurses are all very good, I hear. I certainly hope so, for Mr. Sholmes' sake. This is one of the very, very nice hospitals, as it turns out. They pay not only their window tax, but also their rat and mouse tax. To the prison mobile. Cell 13. How lucky. Hello, Gina. Ah, good, good, good to know. Um, people are are still allowed to keep their weapons in jail. <laughs> oh, you still have the grenade launcher, Hurley, and I made. I wish you wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. What are you here for, Jenny? I have a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were thinking we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry? You heard, get lost. Don't be like that, Ginny. I know you didn't do it. Um, I don't know she didn't do it. You'd never shoot... <laughs> okay. <laughs> You'd never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. You think you know me? Pull the other one. Oh. You ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. That's how I get by. And if I saw me chance, I'd sneak into a pawn shop any day of the week. As your lawyer, I, I suggest you don't admit this to me. <laughs> Just to see what I can lay my hands on, get it? That's the kind of person I am. But, but, Jenny. I'll be in court tomorrow, they said. Some cove came by before and said he'd be a lawyer for me or the like. Said it was my right or something. But I told him to get stuffed. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need no one. I'm a strong, independent woman which don't need no lawyer. She couldn't be staring at me any more obviously if she tried. That's how eyes work. Why are you being like this, Jenny? And then she answered us. What happened? Will you tell us what happened, Gina? Last night. At the pawnbroker's. Nothing at all. I figured it would pay me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. The old bloke walked in on me, and you know the rest. But why, Jenny? Why would you do that? Ain't it obvious? The place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling for, for 25 pence or two. 
die tonight, AZ. You know, it's gonna work, and after time, you don't get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? Are you sure it wasn't because you were trying to stop the world from turning into sand? What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? Oh, give it a rest. What would be the point, anyway? Ain't nothing I could say will make a blind bit of difference. Please tell us, Ginny. We'll believe you, whatever it is. Believe me, don't be daft. You can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the time. And you know what? When it comes to liars, I'm the biggest of the lot. I I've told some unforgivable lies, I have. What do you mean by that? What unforgivable lies? What did you mean before, Jan, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. You're gonna want to question me now. Jenny, please. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give you this something to remember me by. A photographic print of a really adorable snowman and a cat that was only so-so. I found it in one of the pockets of this coat. Ain't no point in me having it. I wonder what a little photograph like that was doing in a pocket of that overcoat. Anyway, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Jenny. But I haven't even exhausted your dialogue tree, so I'm not going anywhere. See? Told you. I don't understand, Gina. Why did you send the public defender away? He wanted me to sign some papers. Represent... Resp... Representation papers or something like that. It's all gonna be rigged anyway. The whole trial. Don't pin it on me because I'm a kid. That's what grown-ups always do. Why do you think that? Because that's how it's always been for me, growing up in the back slums, me all life. Ah, oh, boo-hoo-hoo. Allow me to play the tiniest violin. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, let me give you this. Something to remember me by. Uh, a picture of somebody else's cat that I found. <laughs> if you do it to grown-ups, tell you I get your mates dragged off by coppers. Or worse. I bet it happened to me before when all been sold out and nearly snaffled on the back of it. Okay. Can't trust no one, that's the point. As soon as you do, you're going to grass. Dead. Gino. Listen. If you like, in tomorrow's trial, I could... Forget it! Ginny! Don't you trust Runo? Nah, I don't. Look, I'll ask you nicely now. Just leave me alone. Okay, bye. This is where it happened then, last night. That's right. The two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place, looking for valuables. But apart from the policeman in here, you wouldn't know anything had happened. There's no sign of a disturbance. No, you're right about that, actually. Howdy, Serp. In fact, if anyone, it's the police who seem to be the ones doing the ransacking. I know what you mean. They're like a gang of organized criminals, and all, all two of them. <laughs> A gang of organized criminals all dressed in black. Oi! I heard that. Oi! Oh, Inspector! Er, good morning. <laughs> I suppose. Oh, thank you for your vigilance last night. We got to the scene before it was disturbed, at least. Shame you let the two rogues get away, mind. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I thought you'd assigned extra men to the beat around here, Gregsy. 
Now look what's happened. Hurley's been injured because there weren't enough police on duty. Oh. Your ladyship. No one told me you were coming. I expect you to take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley and see he has the very best medical care. Of course, your ladyship. The very best doctors in the capital are tending to him as we speak. And I don't think it's Runo's fault that the rogues managed to get away, is it? Chasing criminals is the police's job. Absolutely, your ladyship. As you say, ma'am. As you say. The gent in black is totally blameless. Everyone's in agreement about that. Would you believe it? He's like a completely different person with Iris. Talk about a personality change. Oh, where are my manners? Are you thirsty, your ladyship? Oh, what? That's a bit much. You could you could tone it down a little. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like some juice, some nice refreshing fruit juice. Oh, why? Are you thirsty, Gregsy? I have some of my special herbal tea with me. If you'd like some. <sighs> Lovely. How very much. That really hit the spot, your ladyship. I don't even recognize him like this without a, a, a newspaper of fish and chips in his hand. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? Did I say something? Did I not pronounce an H? Oh, haha, <laughs> herbal. I did miss it. Well, I don't, I don't speak her lines with an English accent. Otherwise, otherwise I would have made sure to pronounce it wrong. <laughs> so how's the investigation going, Inspector? Uh, nothing to it, really. Very simple case, this. There's some very definitive evidence. We're just about to charge that diver we, we arrested last night, in fact. Um... Isn't there a friggin' peaky window? Like, couldn't... Don't don't you think somebody could have shot into the room from outside of it? In accordance with Knox's Decalogue? Gina, you're going to charge her? That's right. Should be able to bring her before the judge at, ba at the Bailey tomorrow. <laughs> Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me. Oops. Your ladyship, as much as I wish I could oblige you, I'm afraid... Ah, I see. You've already captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? What? what the? And you're going to put them on the stand as witnesses, are you? How, how could you? How? How could you possibly know that? I had a feeling, that's all. I mean, never to try to keep a secret from Iris. <coughs> so you've arrested the two men who shot Mr. Sholmes, have you? Well, yes. They were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade is being held at the prison? She should be. That's assuming she hasn't lifted the key from the jailer, of course. So lately, my, uh, in 14, my adventures in achievement hunting have been somewhat miserable. <laughs> As I was like, oh man, there's still so many points left to get in, in diadem. And so I've just been doing a ton of diadem farming. Like, it, farming, fishing, and getting materials and stuff, and then crafting a ton of stuff. It helps that stats are high enough now as a level 90 crafter that you can craft expert recipes with a macro but it's still like you need so many of them <laughs> in order to get the achievements and then i have to get like score beyond that and then the mining and botany i don't even know if i'm ever going to go for the the thing where it's like oh cl at first i looked at the achievement and i was like oh 50,000 points and it's like no this says gather 50,000 items 
Gather 50,000 of the items that one node shows up during weather. <laughs> so you go and you hit it a button. You can hit it more than a normal node. And you can get, like, if you use all your abilities, you can get 50 items from it. But that's still, weather needs to show up a thousand, an actual thousand times in order to get one of the achievements. <laughs> and there's more than one of them. Yeah, it's you go to diet. You can't fight things there anymore. Um, it exists. That's where you get the materials for Ishgardian restoration stuff. Uh, but I find myself wishing that there were some things that I had, like. I'm glad that I spammed uh, Delubum Regne and Dalriada before Endwalker came out because apparently it's impossible to get groups for those now. So I'm glad I finished getting those achievements and all of the. Um, the relics but there are other things that i'm like you know i wish i had saved like some triple triad achievements for later <laughs> to be like so i could break up because now i feel like i have like nothing to do traumatized from the single hour that you spent in diadem back in heaven's word hey ever i did very little diademing back when it was a you know the real thing <laughs> But now it's just a zone that you go into and you, you gather there. <laughs> I get, like... It seems like a lot to, to go and learn, like, one of the Shadowbringers savages. <laughs> Titan, I think, isn't supposed to be too hard because of how hard we overgear it. But I don't think you can... You can't, like, skip Light Rampant or whatever the crazy... E12 thing, right? You probably can't. Maybe you can. Who knows? Can you tell us anything about Mr. Sholmes? What about his condition? Sorry, I'm not at liberty to divulge that, divulge that information. Oh, no, I already, I already have all of the coils and Alex and uh, um, Omega, too. I have all the Omega Savage achievements. Those aren't those weren't too hard to uh, to unsync. In fact, didn't I? Th I feel like I I might have told you the story about um, I went to go do Omega Twelve Savage, and you know there was a group and this guy jumped in and was like, oh yeah, you know I've already done these fights. I've we've got, I've got a Discord set up if you guys want to go there so we can be on chat and I can you know help you with learning the fight. And we go in there and he took forever to explain like the beginning of the fight which is which is a great big ball of nothing <laughs> and and then like when we got to the only hard mechanic the whatever it's called the the limit cut where they they dash around like our group screwed that up so many times and then when we finally got through it he starts explaining like all the stuff for the second phase as if we were going to do hello world legitimately and i was like well, there's a there's like a goodbye world strat where just the DPS jump off. I figured we were gonna do that, and he's like, "No, it's not. It's not. It's honestly, it's not worth doing that because you know, the, the fight takes a lot longer. So, uh, you know, it's really not worth it." And and all he was doing to teach was was he showed like a picture that was stickied in one of their channels, and it was just like, you know, just kind of look at this picture and you'll get the idea. And it was like an animated picture of, of DPS moving around and people moving around. And I'm like, this isn't an explanation. <laughs> like, I know it's not impossible to learn it, but it's clearly a savage mechanic. It's the sort of thing where everyone has to know where to go. And if anybody messes it up, it kills multiple people. And he, he was just like, no, well, you know, I... I you don't want to do the goodbye world thing, you know. The clears take a lot longer if you do that. And I was like, even though we had been in the party for like an over an hour just to get through phase one unsynced, I was like, sorry, I just, I'm out. <laughs> and, and then like found other groups that just right through the, right through the fight. It's not a hard fight. <laughs> if if you goodbye world it. Well, I know he's being operated on at St. Saner's. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. Um, t 
terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's the hospital's policy. No visiting at all. Oh. The bullet must have hidden artery in his midriff. He's lost a fair bit of blood. Oh, no. He didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so, but a, a hemorrhage... A hemorrhage? A hemorrhage like that is enough to make even the one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is a human like the rest of us, you know. Well, anyway, he's having emergency surgery right now. They've got to stop that bleeding. But he will be all right, won't he? They'll be able to make him better? Of course, your ladyship. He'll be right as rain before you know it. Really? How do you know? Um, how do I know? Um, because, of, of course. Oh, yes, because Mr. Sholmes is such a great detective, that's why. I better pray the doctors have a better grasp of what's needed to make someone well again. Oh, dear, please don't die, Hurley. I'll report to your ladyship the moment I hear he's out of the operating theater. Um, I couldn't help noticing, Inspector. What? Out with the sunshine? Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and Iris. Watch the sauce, Sonny. I'm a copper, and we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. You do treat us differently. It's because of those Adventures of Herlock Sholmes stories, that's why. Oh. I crop up in them, don't I? Inspector Tobias Gregson. Oh, well, yes, because you're an acquaintance of Hurley's. How's the new chair holding up? It's good. It's a good chair. I, I, like, I think I've worn it in a little bit. It still feels like it should break. Because <laughs> it's made of just, like, mesh. And if I'm sitting on it, it's like, come on, that's going to break in another couple weeks, isn't it? But no, it probably won't. What did you write about the inspector, Iris? Hmm, I don't remember, really. What the hell is wrong with you? How do you not remember? It was one of Sholmes' lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders, is how he put it. Oh, did I write that? And you know what that one line did for me? Hey, the very next month my pay doubled. Doubled, I tell you. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, because everyone at the yard reads them. We'll read the Herlock Sholmes stories. They've even set up a fan club for me. Of course, that explains everything. It was around that time that you became such a toady to me. Can you blame me? All it'd take is one bad word from you and Sholmes could change his tune about me. Oh no, not the wheels. Actually, hang on a second. Hang on. Continue hanging on. So I had set up on my calendar, right? Any chair that I've ever owned, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just sit in it until it self-destructs like a bomb, destroying me. And for this one, I was like, you know what? In the instructions, it says, like, oh, once a month, you know, go and tighten all the things. And I'm like, I'm going to actually do that. And I set up on my calendar, on my phone, alarms to remind me to do that. And the, the last one passed. I don't, think I, act, I don't think my calendar actually pops up and says, like, there's a thing. I must have notifications for it turned off. So I did, I did not tighten the bolts. But I, I will do that after the stream. Now that I know that my phone is respecting my wishes and not giving me notifications even though I want it to. Gregson? No, the great detective will say. He's getting quite overrated these days. Think what would happen to my salary if that came out in print, eh? The whole thing gives me the willies. I can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost worrying about it. Metal wheels. Couldn't find a replacement. The sturdiest wheels. 
I don't think I've ever had the wheels break on any of this. Any, any chair I've ever had, it's the seat that breaks. I think. Sometimes it's it's just like, oh, no, yeah, it's always it's always the seat. It's always like either shifting in the seat makes the whole chair tilt or like the actual seat itself breaks in half or something. I've never had wheel problems. Knock on wood. But that would never happen, Gregzy. Every month when the new Rand magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Here, have some of my tea to settle your er herbal nerves. <sighs> Lovely. Ta very much. That really hit the spot. Your ladyship. Tea total. You leaned back a lot in the whole way... I mean, I, I guess all of, like, chairs, oh, I always have chairs so that you, you can lean, like, would you actually lean all the way back, like, enough that it put weight on there? Like, you could, if you wanted to. It's a free country. Oh, yeah. There's something I was supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Naruto. Previous chair had the arm, actually, the, the previous, my previous chair, the armrest did also break, but that's such a non-issue. <laughs> like, I can live with a broken armrest. It's when it's when the chair is no longer sit inable that I have to get a new chair. <laughs> yes? What is it? I've got an important message for you. I clean forgot about it until now. An important message? I wonder what it could be. Going to tell me what this important message is then, Inspector? Yeah. It's about that young lady who's normally by your side, your assistant. Dear Susie, is she alright? She at the she's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. Nope. Not anymore. She had to head off. Head off? Where? To Lord Strongheart's office, of course. He summoned her. <gasps> is Susato going to be like <laughs> How funny would that be if she wound up being uh, the Count's assistant for this trial? If he was like, I want to hire you as the prosecutor's assistant. And she's like, oh no, what a conflict of interest, but that's okay. we That's how things roll in Phoenix Wright universe. Ah, yes, of course, I'd forgotten about that. One of the whipstocks took her there in a yard carriage after we'd finished questioning her. But she asked us to tell you she didn't have the fare for the return journey, to go and meet her there. She's got a nerve using Scotland Yard as a bloomin' messaging service. I see. Well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. Which she can't... She can't... She can't carry a mere fourpence on her for, for an omnibus back to the apartment. Just, a, just one fourpence coin. That's all you need. Why did Susie have to go see the Lord Chief Justice? She didn't tell me. But I better head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her straight away. In fact, there was... This was before I started streaming. <laughs> Back in the, the apartment on 13th Street where I had a chair. And it was a small chair. It wasn't even like one of these ones where there's like a, a hole back to it with a headrest. It was like one of the... An office chair that you might get for like 30 bucks where it's just like the small back. And even after that actually broke off and I basically just had a stool to sit on, I continued to sit on that until it completely broke. <laughs> yes! Falcon, no matter how many times I come here, I always get the same sense of oppressiveness somehow. Falcon oppression. Do you think the place is oppressive? I think it's normal. How so? I mean, look at that suit of armor over there. You can't take that seriously, can you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. 
So everything is clear with regard to tomorrow's arrangements, I trust? Yes, thank you very much. Bring. There they are, Susaro-san and Long Strong Heart. His heart is strong, but also long. I wonder what they're both talking about. They both look very serious. Can you tell if someone looks serious from behind? They have a serious butt? It can happen. Very good. There is nothing further to discuss. You may return to your lodgings. No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. Wait, what did he just say? Your return to your homeland? Susano-san! Oh, um, Mr. Naruto. What was all that about? Ah, uh, Mr. Naruto. Thank you for coming to collect your colleague. What's all this about? What's all, what's this all about? Why were you talking about Mrs. Sato's return to her homeland? And, and, tomorrow? But that's today! Tomorrow? But what about Ginny's trial? <gasps> you mean... She's been formally charged now? Oh dear. Miss Susato, what's all this about? Oh, please don't concern yourself, Mr. Naruhodo. It's only me going back to Japan. Your life here can continue just as it ha That's not what I asked! <gasps> what happened? Why are you leaving? <laughs> How are we still seeing her? Uh, daylight savings. It's my father. He's fallen ill. Oh no! You only have 50 days to get back to him. Like, it's such a long boat ride. You're... It, does that even make sense? How long did it take the message to get here? Professor Mikotoba? If I may. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You must be the defendant. Ryunosuke Naruhodo, I believe. Yes. Yes. That's right. My name is Eugene Mikotoba. I'm a professor of forensic medicine at Yumei University. We received an international telegram from the Empire of Japan informing us of the news. Ten days ago, father collapsed with a fever. The cause is apparently unknown. And it seems he grows weaker and weaker by the day. I don't believe it. Um, well, obviously he was poisoned with, um... Oh! Oh, what's it called? Komtomam. Yep, that's it. Komtomam. The poison from the first trial. As you are aware, the voyage from here to your country's capital, Tokyo, takes some 50 days. Kurare! That's it, too. I thought it would be prudent to hasten Miss Susato's departure with as, as much as possible. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Kurari with a C. I will leave London first thing tomorrow morning. I can't believe this is happening. So Jean has been charged? She'll have to appear in court? Yes, she was formally charged a few hours ago, and the date of the trial has already been set for tomorrow. As is tradition. Not even 24 hours later? Gina? Ah, the Lestrade girl. The murder of the Baker Street pawnbroker. Yes. An all too transpicious case. Can trans transpicuous? Transpicuous. It's not conspicuous, it's transpicuous. He's been waiting a long time to use that word. 
the pickpocket was clearly disturbed mid-robbery and shot the man in a panic. Oh, did we... Did we already had a conversation about deep-sea cable telegraphs? I see. <laughs> no, the yarn is overstretched as it is without wasting time on these open and shut cases. It's not wasting time. Ginny would never do something like that. Mr. Narahodo. Oh, um, yes, Lord Strongheart? In deference of your fine services to date, I shall overlook this young girl's insolence. But I have no recollection of admitting a child into my office. Leave now. Of course, Lord Strongheart. Criminals will tell the most palpable lies in order to evade justice. The police can ill afford the time it takes to unravel all their tr untruths. Meanwhile, more crimes are perpetrated. Easy, just get Spider-Man on the case. He'll get all the criminals. We have far more serious matters with which to contend. Serious matters? Didn't Gregson mention something like that yesterday? Yes, Inspector Gregson made a similar remark yesterday. It's no concern of yours, though I'm sure I need not remind you of that. Three minutes precisely until my next meeting. You must excuse me. There's just one more three-minute-long thing, Lord Strongheart. Which is... It's Miss Lestrade's trial. I wonder if you might permit me to defend her. A timely suggestion. Sorry? <laughs> the cogs. The girl currently has no representation. But, but that's not fair. Yes, she may be a pickpocket, but she still deserves a fair trial. Do not misunderstand me, young lady. The government provides for those too poor to afford representation with a public defender. The accused need only sign the relevant paperwork, and a defense barrister will be assigned to the case. However, the young girl in question has refused that right. Why would she do that? A question you would do well to direct at Miss Lestrade. You will find her at the local prison. Yes, thank you. Now then, it's time I was leaving. Good day to you. Retcon in case three. With the omnibus? Oh, the whole thing about you get a public defender? Yeah, what was his deal? Did he... He asked other lawyers to defend him. And then, like, we walked in and he was like, You! I'll take you! And threw money at us. He hit me in the eye with a guinea. Gina, charged with murder. Susato-san about to leave. Come, Mr. Narahodo. Iris, we must make haste. But, Susie... You're leaving for Japan tomorrow morning, aren't you? Don't you have packing and things to do? As Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant, my personal circumstances are of no consequence. My sole purpose remains to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you, Miss Susato. It's a very pensive look. I think we ought to visit Gina first. You're not my boss. You're not my real dad, either. In any case, I should like to wish her well before I leave. Hey, Faded. How you doing? Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go. If I'm honest, this has completely thrown me off. I'll just have to do what I can as a lawyer.
Just sit here and listen to the gears. No, we won't. Ah! Oops. Hello again, Gina. Still armed. Good. What are you lot here for now? To have the muzzle of that grenade launcher shoved in our faces yet again. Obviously. Hmm, I think I need to improve the way you load into ammunition into that thing, don't I? Uh, why unload it at all, actually? Look! You can come as many times as you like, but I ain't got nothing more to say to you. Three times in Minecraft, lost both... Oh no! That's bad. Did you fall in the lava? You should carry a... Boat? Just in case? Do boats... Do boats float in lava? I should YouTube that someday. Just in case. In case I ever find myself falling into lava. Gina. I wonder if you might hear me out. There's something I'd like to say. What? What, mate? I'm sorry to say that I must reluctantly bid you farewell. Eh, farewell? Tomorrow I must begin my journey back home, to Japan. I fear we may never meet again. Oh, right. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many lovely people here in London. I have so many wonderful memories. And yet, as things stand now, it will be a glum parting indeed. A part glumming. A plum guarding. Poor Iris is so miserable. Susie. Well, well, that ain't my business. Boats burn only on the outside. Stay on the inside where it's safe. Both Iris and Mr. Naruhodo believe you to be innocent, Gina. They've put, your fa they've put their faith in you. But somehow, you can't find it in your heart to put your faith in them. Yeah, that's right. I can't. What of it? It grieves me greatly to have to say goodbye to my friends when they are so clearly unhappy. Because of you. <sighs> what? It's my fault. Yes, yeah, so I have one final request, Gina, before our paths never cross again. And a bunch of higanbana bloom on the path where we last met. Right here and now. I want you to show both of them that you don't deserve the faith they've invested in you. Eh? Only by doing that will you truly be as alone as you claim to be. What are you talking about? What do you expect me to do, eh? I want you to shoot Phoenix right in the face. No. <laughs> You've told us that everyone lies. So prove it by admitting one of your own untruths. <laughs> Number one, pissed off too many enemies, but recovered all my stuff. Two, flew into a wall, all my stuff fell into lava. Three, was digging for never, lava flooded the hallway, and I panicked. Why did they let her, let her have a grenade launcher in prison? Uh, to defend her from any lawyers that come to talk to her, because all, all lawyers are also allowed to carry weapons. What about what you said before, Ginny? You said something about unforgivable lies. You must tell Mr. Naruhodo and Iris the truth now. That is my last request before I leave. My last request as a judicial assistant. No, I, I can't. I can't. Whatever these lies are, they're obviously weighing very heavily on Gina's mind. Sure would be convenient if I had a Magatama right now that would cause her guardedness to manifest as visible psyche locks that I could then break. No, I have, I have no such Magatama. Gina, I could be wrong, but is it something to do with what happened two months ago? Something about that trial? The one in which Magnus McGilded was acquitted. Oh, the case of that mysterious murder that took place inside the omnibus. You were called as a witness by the prosecution. Is that what this is about? 
yeah, you're right. Because in that trial, I lied. I lied like you wouldn't believe. Will you tell us about it now? Like you said, it all happened two months ago. The coppers got hold of me and shoved me in the witness stand. And based on your testimony, Mr. McGilded was declared innocent. Yeah, well, the thing is, I lied about a whole bunch of stuff. I knew it. <clears throat> what sort of thing did you lie about? I was hiding under the seat that night. That was the truth. It was pitch black in that little cubby hole. I couldn't say a thing. And then... THUD! I heard that loud thud. Like someone falling on the floor. And that's when Mr. McGill... Oh, and that's when Mr. McGill did discovered you. Yeah. He pulled me from out from under the seat and sat me next to the dead man. He doesn't have a stab. They weren't much like to see by, but when I looked at my hands, I had the cove's blood all over him. Un unpictured. I had the cove's blood all over him, unpictured. I was so scared, I couldn't even speak. You had his blood on your hands. In other words, it was Gina that the witnesses on the roof deck saw through the skylight. Then, Mr. McGill started asking you questions, I suppose. Who you were, and why you were hiding under the seat. Yeah, he did. Only, that's not all. What do you mean? I mean, he threatened me. Threatened you how? He made me swear about what I was saying and what I heard. And what he was going to do after the cove was found dead. He made me swear I wouldn't tell about no one about any of it. If I did that, he said he'd let me scarple before the coppers showed up. Gina, you must tell me what he swore you to secrecy about. What you saw, what you heard, everything. <laughs> What'd you say? You said McGill made you swear not to tell anybody what you, what you saw, but you were in the pitch black compartment under the seat the whole time, weren't you? Yes, with Mr. McGill sitting sitting above your head, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's true, but it was when I had the thud of the COVID in the floor, I let out a little scream, see? Couldn't help it. McGill heard that and dragged me out by my arm, and that's when I saw it. It was on the floor next to the old geezer what had been stabbed. A disc, all bright and shiny. A disc? It said MC Bomber on it. Do you mean? Yeah, that's it. The one what the D took off me at Windbanks. So the music box disc was there on the floor of the omnibus? Not for long. McGill did spot it straight away. He picked it up smartish and stuffed it inside his pocket. So that disc was in the omnibus two months ago at the scene of Mr. Mason's murder. And the bog trotter told me I want to mu I want to mutter a nut. I'm trying, but you're just so so delightfully British urchin. <laughs> so delightfully urchin urchinoid? Is that a word? I want to mutter a word of it to no one. What about what you heard? A thud. Because it was so dark under that seat in the cab, I was straining my ears the whole time. After a while, I heard the door and footsteps inside the cabin. Presumably, that was McGilded getting on board. Nah, not only him. Oh! Because I could definitely make out the footsteps of two people. 
In that case, it would seem likely that it was Mr. McGilded and the victim. Mr. Thrice-Fired Mason. In his testimony during the trial, Mr. McGilded claimed he slept during the carriage ride. Uh, but whenever I'm in a carriage, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness, and I always succumb to it. And your own testimony, Gina, supported his. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. The Californian. Excuse me. Yeah, that wasn't exactly true. Neither of them was asleep. I could hear him talking the whole time in low voices. What? What? What were they talking about? Sorry, I don't know. The sound of the horses and the wheels was too loud. But that still tells us something. Mr. McGilded and the victim knew each other. They must have had each other on their friends list. Otherwise, they couldn't talk to each other. So McGilded was lying as I suspected. I knew it wasn't going to take long before someone raised the alarm that the bloke had been killed. Yes, you were quite right. The other passengers on the roof deck noticed very quickly. So when the cab came to a stop, Gilda told me to hide back under the seat again. I climbed in and waited. The two coves from up top ran off to get to coppers. Yes, um, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Right, and after they'd gone, McGill did ask the driver to do him a favor. A favor? Uh, now then, fella, what I need you to do is take this coat of mine and deposit it with the nearby pawnbroker. And for your troubles, let's see now, I, I'll give you ten guineas. A nearby pawnbroker? You mean on Baker Street? Yup, you got it. It was Windebanks. The coach, he snapped up the money and ran off to pop this coat as fast as he could. So then there was no one left in the carriage. Mikhail did open the box under the seat and let me get out of there, but not without conditions. I see. What were Mr. McGilded's conditions, then? For letting you go free, I mean. Not telling a soul. Not for anything about what I saw and what I heard. And there was something else as well. There's more? Yeah. This is the most important thing, he said. Um, after sending the coachman on a little errand for me, with some small change in his hand. Now then, did you hear what I asked of him? Did you see anything at all? At all? You asked him to go pop your weasel, eh? Pop goes the weasel? Is that what that nursery rhyme is about? Selling a coat to a pawnbroker? We're learning so much today. <laughs> I, the fiend's taken me overcoat to deposit with a pawnbroker hereabouts. And I want you last to take the redemption ticket for it. Do you understand? What? You want me to have a ticket? That's right, and I'll come fetch it from you later. Sometime within the next two months. You're to hang on to it until then, is that clear? And whatever you do, don't lose it. Alright then. And in case I might happen to be delayed at all, you're to go to the pawn shop, Windebank, so it is. And you're to extend the loan before the two months is up. Get at No! You're, you're, you're... No. Pop Goes the Weasel is not about selling an overcoat to a pawnbroker. There's a mulberry bush involved. What is that? Is that is that Cockney slang for a Nickelodeon? I refuse to believe that. If you forget, the article will be forfeited and any old fiend could come along and buy it. Eh? But but I ain't got that kind of brass. 
Yours five pounds. That should be enough. Do we understand each other less? Don't try anything funny now. If you go against me... Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, good. And one more thing. Uh, in a few days from now, you'll be visited by the police, of no doubt. The coppers? Aye, they'll come asking you to take the stand in court to testify as a witness. So let's just have a wee chat about that, shall we? Uh, what is it? What it is that you might say, and what it is that you won't. And then I gave him the dots. Is it though? Are are you? Are you just believing something that someone said? Who, who runs this historic-uk.com? Half a pound of tuppany of running. Hmm. Weasel can be traced to the Cockney rhyming slang of weasel and stoat, which which we know what a stoat is from from inscription. Even a very poor Victorian Londoner would have had a Sunday best coat or suit that could be pawned when times got hard. Pop goes the weasel. Ludicrous. <laughs> Fine, I'll just have to accept that that's how that works. After we'd gone all over it, I piked it, got as far away from there as I could. A a de Pombokas took it in some mulberry bushes! Of course! Oh my god, now it makes sense. You hide, you hide, it's a nursery rhyme about hiding your pawnbroker uh, receipt in a mulberry bush. So that the monkeys don't get it. I went to fetch it the next day once it got dark. So McGilded planned it and coerced Gina into giving false testimony. I bet you're ready to string me up, eh? I died. In that big old court room, I told some corkers. The thing is, he said it would make it so we couldn't live in the East End no more. That's what he threatened me with. What a wicked man! He knew everything what went on in the back slums. He knew we had no one to look after us. And we was all just looking out for each other, getting by together. So you mean Mr. McGilded would have... In an heartbeat. He could have chased a lot of us. It, it could have had a lot of us chased out of there if he wanted. And then where could we have gone? I nowhere, that's where. So I didn't have no choice. Thank you, Gina, for telling us everything. But I'm in, I'm for it now, eh? Go on, admit it. You must be livid. Well, you can make amends by doing me a simple favor. A favor? What? Sign the representation to papers for tomorrow's trial. Eh? If you don't actually want me to represent you in court, you can rip it up later. That's how contracts work. Just rip them up if you don't <laughs> Why did he even mention it? But we need that paperwork or we can't investigate. The police won't let us. Investigate what? The scene of the incident last night. Mr. Sholmes was shot, you see. You what? Hurley's having a big operation right now, Jenny. Is it bad? Is he gonna be alright? Sholmes is gonna be alright, alright? That's why I want to investigate. For Mr. Sholm Mr. Sholmes' sake, as much as anything. 
<laughs> Someone's been to r slash am I being detained. If you don't want to pay something, say you just don't want to. Right, so what you're saying is if I sign that bit of paper, everyone's happy. Is that it? Something like that. Mr. Sato? Yes, of course. I have the representation papers here. <laughs> the Mulberry Bush reference in the rhyme was only introduced in America. Because there are no monkeys in England, I see. <laughs> I don't need no one to stick up for me. No lawyer or nothing. Poor Ginny, she seems so lonely. <laughs> to, to think, to think that a Phoenix Wright game would teach me so much about English history. Well, at least this should mean we can investigate the scene at Windebanks now. <clears throat> yes, and perhaps we can come back to visit Ginny when we're done there. I feel like we finally cracked Gina. She's opened up to us at last. Just in time for her to get the death penalty. Now that I have her representation papers, no one else knows just what a responsibility that is. Anyway, for now, it means Inspector Gregson can't stop us from investigating at Windebanks unless he grabs the papers and rips them up. You know how that, <laughs> how that works. Although something tells me he's not going to be happy about it. No, actually, I don't know what to save. What does the jingle sound like? It sounds like that. <laughs> well, I would, I would imagine... <laughs> so, I, I would imagine that nobody in here is actually speaking... Well, no, how... <sighs> Even though I won't really understand it, I, I kind of want to find, if there are any, a, a Japanese Let's Play of this. To, to try and hear, like, if, if they made any of the... any of the British people speak... You know, because obviously they're speaking Japanese in the Japanese version, because it's just a hand wave. Everybody speaks the same language. Um, 